Hi everyone, Floey Zhao here. Uh, today I'm going to be giving a condensed biography of Harry Mulish so you can better understand the personal context behind the assault. Uh, the First World War happened before Harry was even born, but it's still important in understanding his parents' past and how that affects his childhood. So Harry's father's name was Carl, he was not Jewish, and Harry's mother's name was Alice, and she was Jewish. Carl was an Austrian army officer, and he was involved in the occupation of Belgium and France in 1914. Alice was still a child during the war, so she wasn't really involved, but her father was a German Jewish banker at the Deutsche Bank in Belgium. After he got the job, though, Belgium became occupied by Germany, so Alice's family had to run away to the Netherlands, which was neutral at the time. Carl soon followed her because um, his, her father hooked him up with a job at a bank, and this is how Alice and Carl met. And they got married in 1926 when Alice was 19 and Carl was 34. They had Harry a year later in 1927, but the marriage didn't work out because of the age difference. Um, since Alice was a child during the war and Carl was older and was in the army, he had all these traumatic war experiences that Alice and Harry could never wrap their heads around. So during the Second World War, after the divorce, Alice moved away to Amsterdam while Harry stayed in Harlem to be raised by his father and a German maid. And staying in Harlem probably saved Harry's life because the Nazis ended up occupying Amsterdam, so Alice was arrested. Carl, on the other hand, had been working at the Lippmann Rosenthal Bank, and when he first got the job, he didn't know this, but eventually he realized that this bank had become the central repository of Jewish assets, assets that had been taken over by the Nazis uh, when they uh, ghettoized Jewish communities and um, sent them to concentration camps. So Carl actually stayed with this job, even though he was morally against it, in order to pull some strings and get Alice out of jail and also prevent his son from being taken into a concentration camp. Harry absolutely hated that his father was working for this robber bank, he called it, um, but he also acknowledged that he ate from it, he lived from it, and even though he hated the Nazis, they were also the reason that he could stay alive. Um, Carl ended up getting caught uh, as a collaborator, and he served three years of jail time and emerged from prison traumatized yet again. Uh, Alice, on the other hand, she survived uh, and she emigrated to the United States after the war, but all of her relatives uh, who were Jewish, they ended up being murdered in gas chambers. Because of his mixed family background, Harry was considered not Jewish enough to be killed, but too Jewish to work. So he wasn't exactly sent to a concentration camp, but he was removed and persecuted from his schooling when he was 17 years old in 1944. Another war experience he had was when he was traveling on a tram and he saw Dutch policemen rounding up Jews in Amsterdam. Um, so what was happening was that the regular passengers had to move into the front of the tram in order to make room for the Jews who were being deported in the back of the tram. And so Harry was up front, he was standing next to the driver, and the driver was saying, oh, these ugly Germans, how can they do this? It's awful, these poor people being pulled out of their houses. But even though this driver and the Dutch policeman were not Nazi, not Nazi sympathizers, they were still... Um, complying with the Nazis and taking these Jews to their potential deaths. So at this point in the video, I encourage you guys to pause it, maybe read over the slide for a few seconds, and think about how this personal experience highlights the theme of interconnected guilt in the assault. And if you can, draw a fine line between evil and compliance. Where would you draw that line? Um, and how can you place the blame when there are so many different social factors influencing uh, anyone involved in the war, whether they're a persecutor or a bystander or a victim? This is a skeleton of my discussion questions, which I will also be posting on the board. And I also have a few quotes from Mulish himself, if you want to use those in your answers. And I will also be posting my sources um, on the discussion board in case you want to go to these links and find some of your own research that could supplement what I've gone over in this 